Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have this beautiful passage from the 11th Sunday of Luke, always around this time of year, telling us about the great banquet, and the parable or the story of the great banquet. And what's, I think, most amazing about it is it's a perfect summary, I think, for us of our life in Christ. The idea that Christ is constantly inviting us to be with him and to join him at this, this feast, this banquet. And of course, the banquet is the kingdom of heaven. And that, unfortunately, many of us that are, that are called, that are invited, well, we make excuses. And the excuses aren't frivolous. They're not ridiculous. They're just life. I see people all the time, and they say, Father, I know I haven't been to church in a while, and I'm trying, and I'm going to come back. And I say, yeah, life happens, right? Things happen. And we get busy, work, family, different things. And we forget to refocus and reprioritize on our relationship with Christ. And that's exactly what happens. The excuses are very specific in the story because they represent all different aspects of our life. And so when we think about how much we spend on our relationships, how much time and energy do you spend on relationships with family and friend, the most important relationship you can have is that with your spouse. So the one person that says, I've just been married, have me excused, please excuse me, that's representing all the categories of distraction that involve our relationships. The other says, I've just bought a field. I've just bought property. Please excuse me. That represents our possessions. Because what do we own that's more valuable to us than property, than where we live? And then the other is, I've just bought five yoke of oxen. I have to go and try them out. That's not pets. That's work. Oxen plow the field. That's labor. So between those three categories of excuses, you have work, you have possessions, and you have relationships. And think about how much time and energy we spend on work, possessions, relationships. It's 99% of what we do. And so we get distracted. It doesn't make us bad people. It makes us human. We get distracted with life, and we forget to answer the call. And the beauty of the story, I think what's so hopeful and what always gives me some comfort in the story is this idea that though we're continually invited, that the Lord wants his house full, that he continues to invite us in the midst of our distractions, that we have our whole life to be able to answer that invitation. It's a standing invitation. It's there ready for us, waiting for us. He wants us to come and to be with him. He wants us to come to this great feast that we celebrate every Sunday. This is a banquet where we receive his sacraments, we receive his body and blood, but he wants us to be with him forever and ever in the kingdom. That is the great banquet. And when you put it together with the reading from Colossians, it's very interesting because when we say, well, How do I answer the invitation? How do I answer the call? Just read what St. Paul writes, right? To live a holy life, to put away all of the works of iniquity. Put away, what does he say? Anger, wrath, malice, foul talk, slander, lies. All the things we know we're supposed to be doing and we just struggle to do. We have to rededicate ourselves to doing that. And this is the perfect time of year to think about that because we know it's the season of of Christmas. We're getting ready for the ultimate joy, the birth of our Lord and our Savior. The remembrance that God loves us so much, not only is he continuing to invite us, but to remember this time of year, he loves us so much, he's willing to become one of us. Just wrap your head around that for a second the creator of all things, right? We see icons of Christ present at creation. When there was light in the beginning, when he's separating light from darkness, Christ is there doing that. The Word, the person of the Trinity, the second person is doing that. He becomes one of us to go through the suffering and pain of life in every way that we do, except without sin. 
but he experiences what we experience. He knows. He loves us so very much. He becomes one of us. But why does he do that? So we can become like him. So we can become joined together with him. And so this is the time of year to rededicate ourselves to putting God first in our lives, to answering that invitation, to knowing that we are called, but we want to be chosen. It's not enough to be invited. We have to answer the invitation. It's not enough to be called. We have to be chosen. We have to attend. We have to put Christ first. And this is the time of year to do that, to feel so much the love of God in our hearts that we can't help but share that love with those who are around us. And when we share that love, we answer the call. When we try to put Christ first in our hearts, that's what we're doing. We're answering the invitation. We're not saying, no, please excuse me, I can't make it. So many people are doing that in their lives every single day, putting everything else before God and trying to fit Christ in to the empty spaces, the nooks and the crannies of their life. And the 99% work, relationships, possessions. And then in the 1% where there's a crack and a crease, we see if we can fit Christ in. Not realizing we want to put Christ first and foremost in our lives. And everything else is passing, and everything else is going to fade away. But we're trying to make it to that great banquet. We're trying to be saved. We're trying to be with God forever and ever. So it's around this year that I would say, think about rededicating ourselves to Christ. Use the joy and the love and the peace of the season as it starts to bridge into the end of the year and into the beginning of a new year. To start thinking about, because we only have a couple of weeks left and the year is over, how to make a new start, how to rededicate, how to think about a new resolution for the new year, the calendar year, so that we can put Christ first, so that we're not making excuses, but we're saying, I'll be there. Christ is inviting us. Every week, an invitation goes out. Every week, an invitation to receive his body and blood. And we don't want to say, please excuse me, can't make it, got other stuff I got to do. Say, I'll be there. I'm coming, I'll be there. And in every way and in every aspect of our life, when opportunity comes, when we can say our prayers, when we can read our scripture, and when we can go out and perform works of mercy and help people and volunteer, not to say, can't make it, excuse me, I'll be there. That's the answer we want to be able to give. Count me in, I'm there. That's first, that's most important. And as we look around and think about the lives of the saints, and as today we celebrate and remember St. Dionysius, when we think about examples of the saints, that's what the saints do. They live a holy life. They answer the call. They don't make excuses. They don't say, please excuse me, I can't do it. They always say, I will be there. Because it's the most important thing. And it should be for us the most important thing in our lives. It's a struggle and it's difficult, but we can try. Every little bit we do is a blessing. So it's this time of year to take the joy and the beauty of the holidays and use it to your benefit in the spiritual life. To try to do one little thing, to move a little bit closer to Christ, to answer the invitation, to answer the call, to want to be chosen, and to not say, please excuse me, I can't make it, but to say, I'll be there. And to say that each and every day 